Hello everybody and welcome. In this video solution, we are going to talk about the problem Arithmetic Slices to Subsequence. It's a hard problem on lead code and we'll understand how to break it down step by step, observation wise, and we'll finally get to a solution which is quite simply a two-liner. Two-liner in logic, but the code will be a bit more than that. But anyways, to get to that point, we need to understand what's happening first. You're given a nums list, which is a list of integers. 2, 4, 6, and 10 is one possible example. You have to count the number of arithmetic subsequences in this. And naturally, the first question that arises is, what is arithmetic subsequence? Let's take a look at a couple of examples and see what subsequence means. So the subsequence of say 2, 5, 4, 6 is 2, 4, 6. 2, 4, 6 is one possible subsequence of 2, 5, 4, 6. And what we did is we just removed the element 5. In a subsequence, it is possible to delete any number of elements wherever you want. And you can just get rid of them. And whatever the resultant is, is going to be a valid subsequence. What's not a valid subsequence is a case like this, where we have 4, 7, 2, 10. And so we can delete the elements 7 and 10. So we'll be left with elements 4 and 2. However, we cannot swap the elements here. 4, 2 should remain in the same ordering. Here we have flipped that around, so this is not a valid subsequence. So ordering matters basically. Maybe we can exploit this property later on, but we'll see what happens. The second part we want to talk about is the arithmetic part. What does arithmetic subsequence mean? What this says is basically that the difference between adjacent elements is the same. So a valid possible case is 2, 4, 6, where the differences between 2 and 4 is the same as the difference between 4 and 6, 2 basically. And so this is a valid case. What's not a valid case is a case like 2, 5, 6. In this case, the difference between 2 and 5 is 3, 5 and 6 is 1, so this is invalid. It should be the same across all of the elements in a particular sequence. Now that we have the definitions clear, we want to talk about the brute force solution. And uh, this brute force solution is quite trivial. We'll just do exactly as the question says. Look, you want the number of arithmetic subsequences? We'll just go in the reverse direction. We'll enumerate all the subsequences. We'll figure out this part. Then we'll check if they're arithmetic or not. And then finally, we'll just count them. Pretty easy, right? So the brute force solution is enumerating all the subsequences, which is going to take the order of two to the power n time. Uh, certainly this does not sound too good. It's going to take an order of constant space because we can keep on iterating over them, not storing anything in memory. That's fine. Uh, but we also need to check if they're arithmetic. Uh, in that case, you have to iterate over the entire generated subsequence. So the space complexity will actually become order of n here since you need to store this subsequence. And then we can check that in order of n time. Okay. This gives us a total complexity of order of 2 to the power n times n in terms of time and order of n in terms of space. This solution will quite obviously not work out. Actually, let me show you the constraints given. So we'll go to this part. Okay, the nums dot length is less than equals to 1000. This 1000 means that we're looking at 2 to the power 1000, which is not going to work out ever. So we'll need something better. And for that, we'll go ahead and do some observation. As I always suggest, if you're stuck at a brute force solution, feel free to write down a couple of examples and see what commonality pops up between them. In this case, I'm going to directly present that to you, but you can feel free to pause it right now and try it on your own. So we'll look at a case of 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. What I'm going to do is I'm going to claim that I know all of the values, all of the answers for the case of 2, 4, 6, 8. I know all of the possible arithmetic subsequences. And now if I go ahead and add this new element 10, I want to know how things change. Okay, I want to find a relationship between adding this new 10 element with all of the previous things we saw. Okay, uh, how do we do that? Well, again, I'm just going to assume a difference of two. So I'm going to consider all of the subsequences which have two a difference in between them. 
So between 2, 4, 6, 8, let's go ahead and enumerate all the cases. I'm not yet checking by the way if there are arithmetic subsequences or not. I'm just checking whether there are subsequences or not. Okay. So we'll enumerate all of the possible cases. We have 2, 4, 4, 6, 6, 8, then 2, 4, 6, 4, 6, 8, and then 2, 4, 6, 8. This is fine. We have a total of six possible cases over here. We know the answer for this as six. The answer is basically currently the number of possible subsequences, not arithmetic subsequences, but just subsequences. Now let's go ahead and add this element 10 to the list. What happens? Well, we're looking at a difference of two, which means that we want to look previous to what happened. So we are at 10 right now. We want to look at if there is an element eight in the list. And we do find an element 8 in the list. So now we have another of the subsequence created 8, 10. We add 8 because 8 is a friend of 10, sitting at a difference of 2. That's fine. But 8 also has another friend. 8 has a friend called 6, also sitting at a difference of 2. And so we can write oh, 6, 8, 10 also. But not just that, 6 also has a friend called 4. And so four joins the party and similarly four calls two. We started at the element 10 and we looked backwards and we saw what kind of cases were happening. We went ahead and linked all of the possible cases that happened, all of the possible elements that were sitting at a difference of two. And now I want you to note one thing. Let's look at all of the cases here and here. I have marked them with star by the way. So we'll look at a case of six, eight over here. And we find the 6, 8 case over here as well. Similarly, 4, 6, 8 is also present here. And 2, 4, 6, 8 is also present here. It looks like we can use some sort of dynamic programming. It looks like we can use the elements computed for this guy. We can compute the elements for this guy up to late. And then once we want to know what's the answer for 10, we can just do some computation in relation to both of them. And now we'll actually formalize this a bit. So for 10, when we want to find the answer for 10, we'll look at all of the elements that previously end with eight because 10 links to eight. Note that 10 does not link to six because the difference is four, not two. We're looking for only links between eight, uh, between 10 and element, which is 10 minus two, which is eight. Now let's go ahead and count them once more. We have 6, 8, 4, 6, 8 and 2, 4, 6, 8. All of these three were here. But there's another subsequence that formed 8 and 10. Right. So this is actually 3 over here, but 3 plus 1 bonus that also formed. And so the answer is actually dp of i plus equals to dp of j plus 1. Right. We found a recursive relationship between i and j. I basically says that I am at the current index i and j will iterate over all of the elements from zero up till i and will find out who links to what, who is a friend of what. And so we have found the answer. We found a recursive relationship, but not so fast. In this case, we assume that the difference was two. Look over here. This is only for the case where the difference is two. We somehow need to incorporate the information about what the difference is when we are talking about the DP. Somehow we need to combine both of them. So this DP is a one dimensional DP and this difference is another integer. What if I just did this? What if I include a difference inside of the DP as well? So the DP of I with the difference specified is the same as DP of J difference specified plus one. And so now we have sort of incorporated the information of the indices i and j as you see here and the information of the difference all into one neat clean line. We'll also want to check one more thing very quickly uh, in this triangle. Now let's talk about the arithmetic subsequences. See up till now we're only considering subsequences, right? Now we want to talk about arithmetic subsequences. In this triangle, what is the number of arithmetic subsequences? 8 and 10 will no longer count because of this condition over here, saying that the length must be greater than or equal to 3. So we'll go over here and we'll look at 8, 10. This is obviously not a case. 
this will not be a arithmetic subsequence. This is a subsequence for sure. And that's why we've done plus one over here, but this is not an arithmetic subsequence. What are arithmetic sequences? These are these guys over here, 6, 8, 10, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. What do you notice? This plus one that we did is no longer necessary for counting the arithmetic subsequences. And so we'll just pick the answer for that and store that as our answer, right? So what we'll do is we'll just do answer plus equals to DP of J difference. We'll no longer do this plus one over here. And I'm not kidding. This is the entire solution written down in both of these lines. It's a two liner logic solution and we'll see how in Python we can implement that. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, I'll take a quick break and we'll back. We'll go back with uh, the coding part. Cool. All right. We're back and I hope you have tried it, tried writing the solution on your own. But anyways, I'm going to demonstrate a sample code in Python. So the first thing we wanted to do is store the answer. Uh, so we'll initialize the answer with zero. We also want n, which is going to be the length of uh, the nums list. Uh, what else do we need? We need a DP of uh, basically it's a DP of two dimensions. So I'm going to initialize with with default dict of uh, what is it going to be? It's a list of default dicts storing integers. Right? Okay, just to make sure it's a list of a list storing a value which is an integer value. Cool. This sounds right. Uh, I also want it to be the length of uh, for underscore and range of n. Okay, fine. So now we have the DP ready. Let's go ahead and iterate. So for i in uh, range of n, we'll go over all of the i's. And then we'll go over all of the J's in range of uh, look at this again. Uh, we have I, so we'll iterate over all the I's and that's fine. But where does J iterate? J iterate over all the previous elements. So two, four, six, eight, it will iterate over all of the previous elements, meaning that J goes in the range of I. Cool. Now, the first thing we want to do is figure out the difference, which is going to be nums of i minus nums of j. This is basically what we did as 10 minus 8, which is 2. Fine. So we have the difference in our hand now. What do we want to do? We'll do dp of i, the current elements difference specified is the same as plus equals to sorry, dp of j of the difference plus 1. Plus one, remember that bonus element we added in the case it was uh, 10, 8, like this guy over here. This below triangle is the same. This is dp of j diff. But this uh, element we have to add separately. So this plus one over here. Cool. We have the dp ready and we'll also do answer plus equals to. Mm -hmm. What should the answer increase by? It should increase by dp of j diff. As we saw, this is the bottom half of the triangle over here, like below this part, which is exactly the same as DP of J diff. And we are done. Uh, we'll go ahead and return the answer and let's do a quick sanity check. Cool. Looks like the, this has no syntax errors. So let's see, let's see. Okay, great. This worked out well, uh, faster than 9.09. .09. Ah, that's fine. It just worked. Okay, that's the most important thing. Anyways, feel free to try it on your own. Again, uh, this should set, serve as a starting point if you're confused. But all I've done is like write these two lines and the surrounding logic. That's pretty much it. Cool. So as usual, uh, thanks for watching.